This is an exercise in creative thinking. What we have here is a lot, okay? I'll explain it to you. Is the voltage current characteristic of a DC low pressure electrical discharge tube. So basically this discharge tube is very low pressure, similar to the atmosphere of the Earth, all the way up to the mesosphere and the thermosphere. This is the surface of the Earth right here. Imagine if the Earth, if you're looking at it sideways, I know a lot of diagrams or of electrical activity have the surface right here, but for this example, the Earth is sitting over here. Imagine a giant ball right here. And this is the atmosphere as it goes up higher, okay? <clears throat> On the x-axis, we have current, I, which is in amps. And on the y-axis, we have volts, right here. Now, for this diagram, I didn't have the exact voltage. This is very, very high voltage. This is very, very low voltage. So you go up, higher voltage, go down, lower voltage. And for currents, very, very low, very, very low amps down here, current, and very, very high current on the right-hand side of the diagram. We have the dark discharge, we have the glow discharge, and we have the arcing. Now, this diagram, I'm saying it's an exercise in creative thinking because I noticed some similarities between Earth's atmospheric phenomenon when it comes to electrical activity and a low pressure discharge tube. Now I picked DC because charged particles are flowing in one direction from the sun. They're not alternating in AC. The sun isn't alternating currently. <laughs> the charged particles are flowing in one direction towards the atmosphere of the Earth. So that would be DC current when it hits the magnetic field. Now, if you notice, on the very bottom of this, you start up at A, which is very low amperage and very low voltage. The amperage down there is 10 to the negative 10. So basically, no real amps at all and no voltage, meaning essentially no electrical current. The electrical current happens when the charged particles enter into the atmosphere. And when that happens, we have L formation. That's where the saturation regime is. Now, when the charged particles from the sun go, let's just you know, draw a quick picture of the sun here to make sure we know where it's shining. Okay, when the charged particles go this direction, they hit the atmosphere of the Earth, and they hit what's called saturation regime, and this is where the thermosphere is. It causes an elf, which is this giant uh, cylindrical uh, thing, just like if you were to throw a rock into a pond and the pond would ripple outwards, that's what happens with elves. They're really bright and you can, you can catch them if, you have, if you're in the right place at the right time. This is what a lot of CMEs, I believe, do. But solar wind does it and you can barely see it. And then you have your mesosphere, and this is where the sprites are formed. And as, as you can notice, the voltage increases significantly, as well as the amps. And then you have the production of a corona. Now, I'm not too sure when a corona actually shuts off, per se, when a star evolves and becomes more like Earth. But for this instance, a corona, not really too sure where that could happen. I guess you would consider that to be like the, uh, the Aurora Borealis. That is the Earth still this is corona still. It's very, 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 very weak. Again, this is an exercise in creative thinking. And what happens is that voltage breaks down and produces a current, which then forms a jet. We call those blue jets, where that electrical energy still has to travel. But what happens is, is the pressure starts increasing as well as the amount of um, uh, electrically conducting things in the higher atmosphere, such as hydrogen and whatnot. And it hits a regime at the top of the troposphere. This is where we're starting, 
where the glow discharge forms arcs. And this arc transformation goes down here, and this is where the top, very, very to be top of the clouds are. Eventually, that energy is dissipated into thermal arcs, and we call those thermal arcs lightning. And then the charged particles from the sun eventually end up right here, and then boom, you have all that extra energy hitting the surface of the Earth. But what you have here is that it had to travel through all these steps. Now, obviously, it wouldn't take as long as I'm explaining it for a charged particle from the sun to go from here, boom, all the way down. That probably takes about a second, maybe a little bit longer. Maybe it charges up this area, and then it stores the charge, and eventually it discharges its thermal arcs. And we are familiar with those. We see a lot of them during uh, storms and whatnot. So essentially, the atmosphere could be charged up via the sun, causing storms. All right, uh, I guess if you really want to see this diagram, I guess you could just pause the video and overview it. I'll go ahead and place a paper uh, to the, on the bottom of this video to show you where I got it from and all that stuff. But uh, basically, that is something really interesting I thought I'd point out to my uh, viewers. Maybe if they're interested, I don't know.